Hello everyone, thought I'd do a quick uh, video of my fermentation chamber that I'm finally getting a chance to put together. Uh, this is a 13 cubic foot Frigidaire upright freezer. Um, you know, you can do this any number of ways. You can get a chest freezer, probably a lot cheaper. Um, I decided to go with uh, an upright freezer because Home Depot happened to have a deal on it um, back in December. Uh, a lot more pricing you can find on Craigslist or whatever, but uh, it seemed like it would work well for my needs. Mostly because I tend to have multiple batches going at once. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But basically, I want something with a quite a bit of flexibility. And this was still a lot cheaper. The other thing I was looking at getting was the wrapped uh, fermentation chamber, which is about twelve hundred bucks. And this was about half the cost of that. Uh, so, but you can do it much cheaper. You can probably find freer, you know, fifty dollar <laughs> chest freezers on Craigslist or whatever. Uh, but this is the route I went. Um, and so this is going to live in my garage. My wife was. In, kind enough to give me a corner of the garage for this. Uh, so how I set up the inside, uh, go over this. So in the back for airflow purpose, I got two AC Infinity uh, computer fans, uh, mounted those with Velcro, little Velcro uh, uh, dots basically that uh, attached to each of the feet back there. Use some command strip uh, hooks, or I don't know what you call them, cable ties essentially on the top to run the uh, cables and then use the command strip. I used a lot of command strip stuff for this uh, to mount the fan control there, which just turns it off uh, low, medium, or high. Um, I also, just for monitoring purposes, some of data geek, put a Inkbird uh, Wi-Fi temperature humidity uh, monitor, mounted that to the wall there with a uh, command strip uh, as well. Um, that thing hanging down there is just the uh, Inkbird probe. I'll talk about that in a second. And then in the bottom, you could, I could have hung this too, but in the bottom uh, for humidity control, I uh, got an EVA dry. I think that's a 500 um, dehumidifier. And nice thing about that is it doesn't need power. Um, and basically you just stick that in there. And when the light comes on, means that the uh, beads on the inside that uh, absorb the humidity need to be uh, refreshed. So then you can take it out and you plug it in for overnight and you put it back in there and that way it'll keep the humidity down. It got it down to I think 40-ish percent, which is pretty decent. Um, between that and the airflow, I don't think I'm gonna have any mold problems. Uh, and then obviously the freezer provides the coolant, uh, which uh, you know will be needed for uh, to keep the fermentation chamber, uh, temperature down as needed. And then for the heat source, I mounted a 48 inch by 20 inch um, Vivosun, I guess is how you say it. Uh, heat mat that's used for uh, growing seeds and that sort of thing. Uh, hung it that way on the uh, door, inside of the door there uh, with some Velcro at the top uh, and a couple of Velcro uh, strips at the bottom to keep it from swinging around when you open the door. Uh, and that does seem to do the trick. I think, you know, I live in Northwest Washington. It's, you know, in the forties uh, outside and this part of the garage is not insulated and does not have a uh, mini split like the brewery does. Um, so it's, you know, rev relatively amb ambient. I should, sorry, I should say it is insulated. So it keeps, keeps it pretty uh, good, but it does, you know, get cold ish. It's a little above ambient typically. Um, so anyway, this, uh, that provides enough heat that I think when I started, uh, hooking everything up, it was, uh, 45 ish or 50 in the, uh, in the freezer. And when I plugged the ink bird in, set it to 68, it got up there pretty quickly. So that seems to be plenty. Now, if it got super cold or if you live somewhere when it's where it's really cold, I don't know. This claims it'll do 10 to 20 degrees higher than ambient, which ambient in a little box like this, once you get it up to temperature, you know, should relative, keep it relatively stable, uh, but should work for me. Rains to be seen over the course of a long uh, stretch, but I will uh, keep people updated on that. And as for the size of it, the other nice thing about this is I'll just stick a, this is a three gallon for monster. Again, I do mostly small batch stuff. I'm probably going to, I've been doing one gallon, probably going to start doing two and a half gallon, which will be plenty for me because I like to brew a lot of different things and don't go through it terribly quickly. So five gallon batches are kind of going to be a rarity for me, I think. But anyway, you can see you get one of those in there easily. You can actually get two side by side even. Uh, and then there's a whole other shelf down there with it where they will also fit. And these shelves are doubled up at the moment. I'm going to lose at least one of them. So things going to be plenty of space. As far as the temperature control itself, again, that's done with this Inkbird uh, probe. I'll swing around to the side here in a second. Um, 
And basically, you know, there's temperature control and there's temperature control. Um, I can get a thermo well if I'm only doing one batch and get it really precise for that particular batch to control as much as possible the temperature of the actual thing that's fermenting versus just the ambient temperature in the chamber. Um, if I have a couple of batches going, I'll probably, you know, put a, a water bottle or something in there and tape it to the side to get some semblance of temperature control. It'll be less accurate per individual batches, but you know, that's, that's the way I brew and it's, um, better than nothing for sure. So, uh, I did not drill any holes, uh, in this thing yet. I may do that for a little bit of refinement, but for now I'm kind of running all the cables up around the corner there. That does leave a little bit of a gap, um, in the door insulation in the corner, but it's not too bad. I don't think it'll be problematic. I need to refine that a little bit. Um, but as far as how it's, uh, actually controlled, it's uh, an Inkbird uh, Wi-Fi enabled temperature controller. Uh, and, you know, you've all seen these before, I'm sure. But basically, you plug the heat source into one side, cooling source into the other side, plug the whole thing into the wall, and then the Inkbird will um, turn on and off as needed. Uh, so, I don't know. That thing seems to get have gotten reset to a weird temperature because I had it set 68. But we'll mess with that. Um, I did unplug it a couple of times as I was doing all this. So, that that pretty much covers it. Um, I will just climb up on top here for one second to show you how that stuff comes out of the corner, get an idea what kind of gap you're dealing with. So again, the gap isn't ideal, but it's relatively minimal. Um, got a couple ideas on, you know, I may just cut a little notch in there and stuff some insulation in there. Cause as you open and close the door, I probably don't want that stuff moving much anyway. Um, or I could drill. The problem with drilling is, of course, <laughs> you need, need to kind of look at the at the appliance schematics to make sure you're not going to drill into anything important. But, uh, oh, and that plug back there is where the, how the fans are powered. Um, yeah, and that kind of covers it. Uh, it was a fun build out. I think it's going to, even though the brewery itself, the brewing area that I have itself has temperature control in that it's a mini split, um, you know, little room. It's 150 square feet or so. Uh, so, uh, it, but it'll be nice to get the beer out of there. And that way, uh, I don't, I'm not worried so much about the ambient temperature in the brewery itself to control the temperature of the fermentation. So I think this will be a nice improvement to my, uh, brewing process. Thanks for watching everybody.